Hello and welcome to Ultimate JavaScript Strings. I'm Daniel Stern and I will be your host along this riveting journey throughout the world of strings. So who is this course for? So this course is suitable for absolute JavaScript beginners. People who are already JavaScript pros might find that a bit of this information is already stuff they know. However, if you also like to review things generally, this will also be fine. On the other hand, if you're coming from PHP or C Sharp, then this course will also be good for you. In this course, you'll really learn the limitations and capabilities of JavaScript strings. So you'll find that they're different from the limitations of strings in PHP and C Sharp. Watching this course can help you use these strings as intended. Finally, whether you're a front-end or a back-end developer, this course will help you out, as these strings work both in the browser in Chrome on the front-end and in Node.js on the back-end. So, it doesn't really matter if the code is on the front-end or the back-end, these strings will just work. So, if any of these sound like you, then please continue, and in the next video, we'll do a roadmap of what we're going to cover in the course. All right, so let's go over a roadmap of what we're going to cover in this course. First, in the chapter on all about strings, we're going to learn about strings. What are they? How do you define one? What makes a string different than a number? Where can you use strings, etc.? We're going to cover quite a bit of stuff, so it should be an interesting chapter. In the next video, we're actually going to crack open our Chrome developer tools and work with strings. We're going to do a whole bunch of operations on strings that would be common in JavaScript. And by the end of this chapter, you should have a full understanding of how to use and interact with strings every day. In the last chapter, we'll be doing some advanced string techniques. So we'll be using template strings as well as checking out a bunch of the built-in ES6 features that are available on strings. This chapter should go beyond giving you a rudimentary understanding of strings and really give you the tools you need to work with strings on an intermediate or senior level. Now, before we begin, you're really only going to need one application on your computer to do this course. I decided to do all the demonstrations inside Google Chrome, since Google Chrome supports all these strings and it's easy to use and everyone already has it. So just make sure you have that on your computer and you should be 100% set. Finally, throughout this course, you're going to see me doing demos and I'll ask you to demo along. And there'll also be quizzes and exercises for you to do between the lessons. Do the exercises. Don't just skip them. If you don't do the exercises, it'll be difficult for you to retain the knowledge that you've learned. So please just do them at the time they come up. Don't save them for later. Just do them all when the time is appropriate and you'll retain the most from this course. So that's it by way of introduction. Now let's move on to all about strings. All right, in this video, we're going to ask the question, what is a string? So strings are kind of simple to understand. A string is any series of letters or numbers. As well, many symbols like backslashes, forward slashes, colons, etc., can be part of a string. So for example, the word any is a string. The three words, what is a, spaces and all, is also a string. And the letter D at the end of and, just by itself, is also a string. So you'll notice that I put the strings that I'm representing here inside quotes. That's one of the ways you express strings in JavaScript. And of course, we'll be covering this in a later video. So some more examples of strings would be the letters ABC, the string 3A, 
the word hello or the numbers 5, 7, 2, 3. Now note, next to the numbers I put sometimes. That's because if you only have numbers, sometimes this is stored as memory as a number, and sometimes it's stored in memory as a string. It's easier to tell sometimes by putting something that you're sure is a string inside quotes. Now this number won't be misinterpreted as a number, it's clear that it's a string. So in JavaScript you can have strings that are only numbers or partly numbers, but if a string has only numbers in it, then it's liable to be confused for a number, so keep that in mind. And finally, as you might have guessed, these crazy things are called strings because they're a series of letters. Like imagine taking a bunch of popcorns and sticking them all through a string. Now note how these pieces of popcorn are in order and they all represent individual things. If we put a letter on each piece of popcorn, It's like the letters are laid out on a string. Each one is individual, but they all work together and the order doesn't just casually change. So whenever you're thinking strings, think strings of popcorn, just like on Halloween. Did anyone actually eat popcorn on Halloween? I never got popcorn on Halloween. Always candy, not that I'm complaining though. What up JavaScript newbies? I'm the Code Whisperer and today I'm gonna to explain to you what strings are. How do I tend to do that? Well, I've got this string right here in my hand. Now, it's not it's technically a string, it's more like a microphone cable I didn't need anymore, but the principles all remain the same. Look at how it goes. So it starts here. You can look at this like a word, like the word hello. At this end of the cable is the first letter of the word hello, H. Then as you move down the string, you get there, all of these are letters you can imagine until we get to the very end. And at the very end is the O at the end of hello. So you take this string and it starts with the first letter, ends with the last letter. It's a sequence of letters. Notice how I can't take part of this cable like this part and move it to the end. I can't just switch around the letters of a string. It doesn't happen on its own. To do so, I'd have to create a, a new string, a new cable. So that's one property of strings. Really, strings aren't that complicated. They're a data format structure that can hold more or less anything. A word like hello, even a string of digits or spaces or symbols. You can really do anything at all with strings. I hold here in my hand Michael Cunningham's The Hours. Great book. Now, let's go hunting for some strings. Here's a string. Moment. A single word can be a string. How about this? Oh, this is nice. Outside the window is the brief interlude of grass that separates this house from the neighbors's. That was a string too. Anything is a string that you can say. How about the title? The hours. Is the hours a string? Yes. Is anything you can say a string? Yes. There's nothing that can be verbalized that can't really be represented by a string unless it's a guttural enunciation like and even that probably you could put to a string. So. Maybe I've had trouble explaining strings because that's because strings are so darn simple. It's like trying to explain what the color blue is or happiness or joy. Strings are happiness and joy. And well, that's about it. That's all I got. Strings. What can they do? Can they do things? Let's find out. So how are strings useful? Well, strings are one of the most useful data structures that exist. There's tons of things you can do with strings. So for starters, a string can be used to represent any message or even a document. So if you have a message like see at 5 or meet me by the hill or attack at dawn, these can all be held in a string. And if you're writing a computer program and you needed to store this information, say for example, a message that appeared on screen to the user, you would use a string. So you use strings to store any message or even an entire document. Strings have, there's no limit to the length strings have, so you can keep an entire book or something else that's huge inside a string.
In addition, whenever you have any authentication taking place, if you log into a website using a server or anything like that, the password is going to be stored as a string. It's going to be hidden from the user viewing it, but in order for the backend to process whether the password is correct, it needs to be represented in some kind of data format, and most often that's a string. So you can use strings to store passwords or tokens or also messages. Lastly, because of a kind of weird way that JavaScript works, you can eval or evil code. Now eval, guess what kind of structure eval accepts? That's right, it takes a string. But when you pass a string to eval, it gets interpreted as code and run. So there's so many reasons why this isn't recommended and you shouldn't do it, but hey, it's kind of fun and people do it anyways. So you can write a computer program made up entirely of strings and then eval them and you'll get a result. At its core, JavaScript always converts programs into strings and as well as functions before evaling them. All in all, this is just a small taste of what strings can do. Strings are really one of the most versatile data formats there are. So, You've mastered JavaScript strings after watching this course, but where can these elusive strings be found? Where is this knowledge relevant? So pretty much every website you visit is almost guaranteed to use a string in some way, whether it's JavaScript on the front end or just dealing with the data on the back end. JavaScript strings are on almost every website and they work in every browser, Chrome, Internet Explorer, or Firefox. Next, if you have an application running on Node.js, and this isn't just, um, for example, a website, but this could be a whole server or even some kind of alternative operating system, there's going to be lots of strings, and those are themselves going to be JavaScript strings. Finally, if you have something that's based on a Raspberry Pi or an Edison, like a drone or a robot, it's going to be using JavaScript too. Probably JavaScript strings are going to be the means that communication happens between, say, a Raspberry Pi and a home API in the case of, say, a Nest-style home automation. So you see, JavaScript strings really are some of the most versatile strings around. You can use them for front-end code, back-end code, or even programming robots. So it makes it very valuable to learn these things. So let's review what we learned in this chapter. So we learned strings store data, a series of numbers or letters that never changes, something we can rely on to always be the same. In addition, we've learned that strings are the ideal data format to store messages that the user might read or the password once it's made its way to the data storage place. Finally, these strings are useful not just on front-end code where you usually see JavaScript, but any back-end code which is running Node.js, or any device which is also running JavaScript like an Arduino. In the next chapter, we're actually going to crack open Chrome and work with strings in several action-packed examples. So get your coding gloves ready and join us in the next chapter. All right, in this chapter, which I've titled Working with Strings, We're going to cover all the sort of basic stuff that has to do with strings. So all the rudimentary operations is stuff we're going to master in this chapter. We'll create strings using three different syntaxes. We'll also learn about multi-line strings. Which are strings that can have a return or otherwise occupy more than a single line we'll learn about concatenation, or the process of combining two strings together. We'll learn about string replacement, or changing just part of a string while keeping the rest the same. Finally, we'll learn about string cases, so we'll change the size of the string to uppercase or lowercase, whatever the job requires, and we're going to cover all this in this chapter, so stick with us. So in JavaScript, there are three main ways to create strings. You have to put strings inside a pair of quotes, but what makes quotes interesting in JavaScript is you have multiple different options. 
So the first and most common quote is this double quote that I've drawn. You can put a regular string inside double quotes and it works just fine. You can also use these single quotes that I've indicated here. It might look a little simpler if I put a letter there in between them. So this is the letter A in single quotes and this is the letter B in double quotes. These are both valid strings. Now this little fellow right here is called the tilde. Or I like to call them ticks and it's a third way of storing strings. It's the best way of creating strings because you can include a multi-line strings and templating which we're going to cover both of them in later videos. So here I am inside Chrome. Now if you'd like to code along, and I recommend you do, just open up Chrome and go to about colon blank. It doesn't have to be incognito, I just uh, prefer to use incognito when I'm teaching a course. But you can just open up Chrome and go to this page. Then press F12 and you'll see your terminal. So here we are in JavaScript and let's just try to write a regular thing. I'm just going to try to type uh, hello world just like that and we get an error unexpected identifier because well it doesn't know what hello or world are since we didn't put it in quotes it doesn't look like a string and so javascript is confused the first kind of quotes we learned are double quotes so let's put hello world inside double quotes now as you can see it is a valid string javascript returns the string hello world Let's try it two other ways. So I'll just take a, another sentence, winter is coming, and I'll put that in single quotes. And it looks just nicely. As you can see in what's returned, it's converted it into double quotes. Double quotes are the standard quote that is used at least by Chrome. Finally, we can put something in ticks, like hear me roar. So I'll open it with one tick, and that key is right above your tab key. And then I'll say, hear me roar. And as you can see, it converted it back to a double quote string and returned it to me. So those are the three ways to create strings. Like I said before, the third means is the better for reasons that we'll see a bit later. It just has tons of features that the first two don't. All right, in this video, we're going to learn about storing strings in memory. So in the last video, we made a string just fine. Let's make another string. And that's fine, it's a string, but how do I access that string after the fact? If I want to get access to my Oathkeeper string, well, I just can't, it's not there. So the way we use this is by storing it in a var, using the var or let keyword. We'll try both examples. So I'll say var, and then I'll choose a unique name like my string. And then I'll make it equal to the value I want in quotes. Now if I ever type my string, I get the string that I stored. Let's try it again with the let keyword. And we'll put this string in single quotes and we'll say oblivion. So both the var and the let keywords create these variables that stay in memory as long as the program's running. If you type the name of the variables, you get the string that's returned. But there's one more important detail. Now we know our value a string is equal to oblivion. Now let's create a new variable and make it equal to a string. We'll say var another string is equal to a string. So if we look at another string, of course it's oblivion. All right, now let's learn about multi-line strings. Now let's say we have a string that we want to have a line break in it, like the phrase, hello, who's there? Let's try typing this out. So I'll say ver, double quote, I will say ver string equals double quote hello now I'll press shift enter to insert a line break 
Now I'll type who's there. And I'll end it with another double quote. If I press enter, I'll get an error. That's because double quotes and single quotes can't have line breaks inside them. So if I try single quotes, I'll also get an error. But now let's try our little friend, the tilde. I'll replace these quotes with a tilde. And now it works. If I type string, it gets my string with the line break. So as you can see, only tilde strings can hold line breaks. If I want to use a regular string and have a line break, I have to use the return line break operator. So I can press up to get my line there. And, and I'll turn this back into double quotes. But instead of an actual line break, I'll do a backsplash n, a backslash. Now if I have a look at my string, there's the line break again. So backslash n is a special symbol used to insert a line break in JavaScript and some other kind of strings. When we use a template string, it automatically inserts one in the place of a line break instead of throwing an error. So obviously that's some pretty cool stuff. Remember that only tildes can convert a line break into a backslash n automatically. Next, let's learn about concatenation or combining strings. Here's a simple example. Let's say we have two strings that should go together. I'll make one string and let's call them A and B. Let A equal Jamie. And we'll let B equal Lannister. So now we have these two strings, Jamie and Lannister. How do we combine them into one string? Well, when you combine strings, it's usually called concatenation. And it's most easily done with the plus operator. So if I say A plus B, it gives me Jamie Lannister with no space in between. If I wanted to include a space, I concatenate another string in between them. A plus quote space quote plus B. And there's my new string. It's all in one. If I do P B plus A, of course, it's the same strings, but in a different order. So the plus operator combines two strings. You can also use the exact same functionality via the concat method. So I can say A dot concat B. And once again, I get my string. We'll be learning a bit more about concatenation when we get to template strings, since template strings are very useful for this purpose. But finally, have a look at your original variables, A and B. A is still Jamie. B is still Lannister. Concatenation does not change the original strings. It merely creates a new one. All right, now we're going to learn about replacing parts of strings. Let's say you have a string and part of it you want it to be replaced. So let us create a string and I'll call it uh, my string. Now let's give it a value. So it says attack winter fell at dawn. But what if I wanted to create a new string with the value um, casterly rock instead of winter fell? Well, it's pretty easy. So I'll say my string dot replace the first argument is what I want to replace, or Winterfell. And the second argument is what I want it replaced with. If I press Enter, the string has been modified. So the replace changes a value in the string. But let's try a different one. I'll make a new string. And I'll have it say, Bob says Bob's Burgers has the best burgers. I've chosen specifically to replace, to use a string that has multiples in it. 
multiples of the same word. So now let's try my string two dot replace. And I'll try replacing burgers with chicken. So we get a weird result. Bob says Bob's chicken has the best burgers. Why could this be? Well, as it turns out, replace only replaces the first instance of a string. To get to replace all of them, you have to do a few different things. First, instead of having it in double quotes, we're going to do a whole new thing. We're going to have it in forward slashes. This makes it not a string at all, but a regex, something that can be used to test against other things. And then after the regex, we're going to add the G or global flag. So with this syntax, it will replace every instance of burgers with chicken. And that's how you do it. It's a little bit tricky to remember the regex syntax, but with a bit of practice, you're sure to have it mastered in no time. All right, for this final video, we're going to take a look at chasing, changing the case of a string. It's a simple but useful feature. So let's create a variable of a string. I'll call it var a, and I'll make it into a nice long string. So I have my string, the bear, the bear, the bear, and the maiden fair. So if I press A and then press dot, I get a list of all the built-in methods that string has. So this is something that you can look at after this video or whenever you want to see all the stuff it can do. We're not going to cover all of this stuff, of course, because I've chosen to only include the stuff I really think that you need to know. But if we go to the bottom here, we see all of the case-changing functions to locale lowercase, to lowercase, to uppercase, etc. So let's take this string and turn it to uppercase with dot to uppercase. <laughs> and now it looks like it's being shouted. Let's try the same thing, but to lowercase. Whoops. And now it's all lowercase. Pretty simple, right? It's a basic but useful functionality that every string has that can be used to turn into a slightly different string. All right, let's review what we learned in this chapter. We learned how to create strings. We learned three ways to do it. Single, double, and tilde quotes. We learned you can store strings inside of variables, just like above. We learned you can have multi-line strings by using tildes. We learned you can concatenate strings with the plus symbol. We learned you can replace parts of strings with the replace method. And finally, we learned that you can change the case of any string by using its built-in methods. Make sense? Great. In the next short chapter, we're going to be covering some more advanced stuff about working with strings. All right, in this chapter, we're going to work on a bunch of more functionality that we didn't learn in the last chapter all about strings. So we're going to learn more about template strings. We touched on them a little bit in the last chapter, but we're going to learn about why they're actually called template strings and how to template with them. We're going to learn about includes or how to find out if a string is contained in another string. We're going to talk about the tricky matter of converting strings to numbers. It can be very tricky since it can't always be done. And if we have time, we'll include a little bonus material for you too. So let's get started. All right, friends, hold on to your hat because this is going to be a crazy chapter indeed. We're going to talk about template strings. So as we learn, template strings are strings that are contained inside tildes, and they can have line breaks in them. Let's write one now. 
And I'll just be sure to put these in the tilde quotes, not the double quote like I almost did there, since only tildes can have line breaks in them. So there we have that. But let's learn about a feature of them. Now with template strings, we can take a different string and insert it right in there as we're writing the string. So for an example, let's now store another name in memory that's not Brienne. Let's say Ramsey. And this can be in any kind of quotes. Now we'll go up to where we define string, ver string, but instead of saying dear Brienne, here's what we'll do. We'll say dear, then we'll write the following dollar sign, opening curly bracket, closing curly bracket. Now, whatever is inside these opening curly brackets is interpreted as plain old JavaScript, and the whatever the result is is inserted into the string. So here we can type name. And if we have a look at string, now it says Ramsey. Let's try it again. Let's redefine our string. So let's define ver castle. And we'll just make that equal to Dragonstone. Now, here in our template string that we're writing, we can replace Winterfell and do the same thing. Dollar sign, open curly, closing curly, and inside the name of our variable. This also works with regular JavaScript. So I can say right after this, dollar sign, opening curly, and I can say 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. And then after that, times. And if we press Enter, you can see it's combining all of these into one string. It's like what I typed was a template and then what the variables I had before were all the values that went into the template. So template strings are a new feature of ES6. Uh, you can only use them in environments that at least partly support ES6 and they're super, super cool, easy to use and time saving. So I hope you enjoy using template strings in all of your projects. So let's say you got yourself a long, long string. Let's type one out. So I'll say ver names equals, and I'll make it into a long list of names separated by commas. Now here I have my list of names. And I want to figure out if it contains a certain name. Well, we can use it with the string includes function. So I can say names dot includes. Now as a little history, this was supposed to be called contains, but due to a previously existing JavaScript library that already defined it differently, it would have just broken too many existing projects. So they called it includes and any existing problem was solved. So this will return a Boolean if whatever I pass to includes is there. So let's pass the string John. And it returns true. Now let's pass the name that's not anywhere in that string. And it returns false. So that's about it. Includes always returns true if what you pass is contained in the string. So you can use this anytime you want to check if a string really does contain the value you expect it does. Finally, let's talk about converting strings to numbers. Now, this can be kind of tricky, but why? Well, let's start with a number. I'll make a number. And that's my number. Now, if I want to make it a string, I can just say a dot to string. And it turns into a string. Anything can be turned into a string because you just have to put it in quotes. Whereas numbers can only contain numbers. So let's try the reverse. Let's say ver g, and I'll make it into a string of just numbers. Now to convert something into a number, we use the built-in function parse int or parse float. We'll do parse int for this one. And we'll pass a g. And now it turns it into a number. But let's make g a little bit different. We'll make it into a bunch of numbers, then put a bunch of letters, then a bunch more numbers. And now let's try parsing in g. Hmm. So parse int stops at the first thing that's not a number and just gives you that. 
So if my whole number was meant to include the stuff after the letters, that would have been a big problem. Now let's make a new variable and we'll call it var n and we'll make it equal to 12653.4889 cd. Now if I try to parse the int of that, it stops at the dot since it's the first thing that's not integer. But if we try parse float, it goes past the first dot. By using parse float, we can turn strings into numbers, which can be pretty hard. Just remember that if your string contains lots of numbers and letters, then the results might not be as expected. All right, let's review what we've learned. So in the first chapter, we learned all about what strings are and what they do. And of course, we learned that strings are nothing more than basically words or phrases. We learned to create strings and we used to learn to store them. We learned very way, various ways to edit strings like concatenation and replacement. We learned about template strings and how to use them. And finally, we learned how to convert strings into numbers, an often challenging process that can take all our skill to do. And that's all we covered in, the show, in this course. You know, there isn't that much to strings, but they're so useful and so powerful that I really wanted you to learn everything that you can do with them.